Hello. Hi, buddy. What do you say? Are you going to help me with this solar panel rack today? Probably not because you're a big weenie outside, aren't you? That's okay. All right, today's video, we're going to be putting together and installing an EG4 solar ground mount from Signature Solar. All right, and this solar ground mount is $279. They say it's super easy to put together with just a couple of hand tools, and you should be able to put it together in roughly 30 minutes. It comes with pretty much everything that you need. However, I did notice that it doesn't come with like lag bolts for wood, which is how I'm gonna be installing mine. It does come with lag bolts if you're going into concrete, it just doesn't come with lag bolts if you're going into wood. So here in just a little bit, we're gonna be running to the hardware store to pick up a couple of number two, six by six, 10 foot long tree to post. We're basically gonna cut those in half, dig some holes in the ground, Put the posts in there similar to how they do telephone poles. You know, I'm not going to be using concrete or anything like that. You know, I'm just going to set the posts in there and then backfill the dirt, pack the dirt in as I backfill. And that's pretty much how I'm going to be mounting my panels. All right, so just a couple of quick side notes is Signature Solar did send me this rack a few months ago. It was kind of in the dead of winter. Everything was frozen outside, so I couldn't really, you know, get out there to put it together and do anything. Now that the ground is thawed out, we can actually get out there and drill some holes and put this rack together. Also, since they did send this to me a few months ago, they've actually updated the rack. The rack that they have now listed on their website, it's actually adjustable, so you can change the angles, you know, for summer and winter time. The one that I have, it's at a fixed angle at 25 degrees, kind of like a, an all around angle for all year. That's pretty much it. All right, well, I think that's all the side notes that I can come up with right now. So we'll head outside. I'll show you where I'm gonna be putting all this together and then we'll run to the hardware store, get the treated post and the galvanized hardware and then we'll get started. All right, let's get to it. All right, this is the side of the house where I'm gonna be putting all this together and mounting the ground mount. This is basically the south side of my house. Of course, you could put yours wherever you want. Anyway, I'm gonna be putting all four posts in roughly this area right here, and then I'll be putting the rack right on top of the posts. So just like I said a second ago, we have to run to the hardware store and get the treated lumber and galvanized hardware. So let's get to it. All right, so here's where we're at. We're about 62 inches away from the wall. So the first post is gonna go right there and that's like at 12 foot nine and a half ish. All right, and then we're about, uh, I think it's 53 inches, you know, roughly till center. All right, so we got four posts total. That's the start of it right there and it'll be, you know, close to that edge right there. All right, so next up is the auger. Alrighty, there we go. We got all four holes dug. Took a little bit of time because holy crap, there was a lot of bricks in there. You can see some right there, you know, and they're just all over the place. Anyway, we went down roughly 36 inches. Uh, I think that's gonna be good enough. All right, I'm gonna cover these up and we will continue tomorrow morning. Alrighty, it's the next morning. I'm putting a couple of blocks out here so I can carry this big ass post and set it down. Basically, I'm just gonna find the center mark real quick and then cut it with my little electric chainsaw. And look at that, not bad of a cut. All right, we'll pick these up and grab them over here to the solar panel rack area, throw them in the hole. And, and of course, I'm not even close, so I do have to make some adjustments. Basically, dig out a little bit here and there, use a shop vac to grab all the dirt and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, that worked out really, really good. It was a suggestion from my neighbor. All right, basically what I'm doing here is just backfilling a little bit of dirt at a time. Once I put the dirt in, I'll pack it down with a two by four and then throw a little bit more dirt in there and just repeat the whole process all the way up to the top. Boom, there we go. All four posts are in the ground and they're all fairly level and 
fairly straight. I mean, I guess it's not perfect, but it'll be, I mean, it's close enough. I'll get it all smoothed out and then we'll start installing the solar panel rack. All right, this is gonna be the area where we're gonna mount the solar rack to. Basically, I've got four five foot long, six by six, number two treated posts. Uh, they're all buried three feet into the ground. And of course, my posts are not perfectly straight up and down, and they're probably not very level. Uh, all of these are roughly 52 to 53 inches apart, except for that one on the left. I don't know what happened there, but that one's just a little bit further apart. Technically, it shouldn't be a problem. I just wanted to make a note of that. I'm just going to throw it on here and see what we end up with. All right, first thing we're going to do is start with the base or the mounting brackets. And I've got a string line right here for my straight line. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do is kind of center this on the post and I'm probably going to leave about an eighth of an inch away from the line on all four. Whenever we do install this, this is the correct orientation. The two holes are gonna be north and the one hole is gonna be facing south. Next thing I'm gonna do is just kind of put a mark in all the holes and then I'm gonna pre-drill the holes. Right on top just like that like i said before i'm going into some wood posts so i got some galvanized lag screws i got 5 16 by 4 inches long and of course i also got some washers to match all right well i don't know actually which way would be easier to kind of put this together either mounting the base or the mounting bracket to the post and then building off of that or just building the triangles right here. For this first one, I'll go ahead and show you how to put it together. So you're gonna need one of the longer rails, one each of the two shorter rails. You're gonna need the 80 millimeter bolts, the 65 millimeter bolts, two of the U brackets, and then of course, the base. All right, so I guess what we'll start with is the base and the shorter rail. I'm gonna put the two holes and two holes together and you're going to use two of these 65 millimeter bolts. I'm going to leave those loose for the moment. Next thing we're going to do is get the medium or the little bit longer rail. That's going to go on this side and it's going to do the exact same thing as a 65 millimeter bolt. All right, next thing we're going to do is grab the longer rail and you should see four holes on the top end the side with the holes kind of closer together are going to be facing south first thing is take a u-bracket and set it right on top of the rail now we're going to grab an 80 millimeter bolt you're going to need two of these basically two per rail through the rail and then the u-bolt's going to go on there so we should have it together like that so far and now we're gonna take two more of these 65 millimeter bolts and assemble it in this way right here. All right, there you go. You should have it in that configuration right there. Next thing we'll do is mount it to the post. I did leave all of these loose, which I think I'm gonna do throughout the whole thing until I have all of them put together and on the post, and then I can do some more alignments later on. All right, got all these nice and tight. I guess you can technically rotate it up just a little bit, so there will be some movement in there. I don't think there's anything else you can do about that. So anyway, the next step is installing the L bracket. One is gonna go in this hole right here on the rail, and the other one's gonna go here on the top. Just drop that in. And then same thing for the upper one. It also gets installed in this direction. Like that. All right, next thing we're gonna do is basically combining these two rails together. So you need the little splice or combiner bracket. So this has the ground or bond washer in there. And those have those little sharp raised edges on it, which whenever you tighten it down, it pierces the aluminum. It bonds the two rails together. So basically how this is gonna go on is this bottom portion right here is gonna slide into the rail. And then on top of the rail, you're gonna have the washer and this piece of aluminum right here. And then we can tighten them down. So you could either go in sideways like this. So there you go. You have the washer, the bond washer on the outside. That's basically what we wanna do, all right? 
and then try to make it you know, as equal as possible. What I'm probably gonna do is just take this over to the back patio and lay it down flat and then tighten it down. But that's basically what we're looking for. All right, there we go. There's our finished product right there, okay? All right, now we can install the rails. All right, and here's that, that jumper or that bonding strip right here. So that's gonna be facing down. What I'm trying to do is tilt the rail so we can get the T inside there, just like that and then we can tighten that down. I'm not gonna go too much because I need to do the other T's. And then tighten them down. All right, and then repeat the same process for the upper rail. All right, the very next step in the manual tells you to install the grounding clamps, these little brackets. Uh, basically, it tells you to put them over here, you know, on one of the ends. You can put them wherever you want. I'm probably gonna put mine right here and then one right there. And then I'll probably run my ground wire kind of back a little bit. And then behind that panel over there is the grounding rod to my house. And I'll just ground this frame to that right over there. Of course, we're probably not gonna do that in this video. We'll probably just throw the clamps on here for now. And then later on, whenever I actually wire up the panels and whatnot, you know, I'll do that then. All right, so this is where I'm gonna be putting my bonding clamp is right here. Uh, just so it's kind of out of the way. You're gonna slide this in crooked and then you're gonna snap in the little stainless steel, I don't know, whatever you call those things, all right? So we're gonna go in from the top first. So the nut is basically in there and then we can just kind of pop it in place like that, okay? If you happen to put yours in the wrong spot or whatever, just remember you gotta replace that stainless steel piece back there. And the kit did come with six extras just in case you need to do that. But what we're doing right now is we're piercing the aluminum because aluminum has a nice little oxide layer on it. And that's why those little points are on there. And that's just to break through the aluminum. And on the top rail, I pretty much did the exact same thing. Put the ground clamp right over here just so it's out of the way. Boom, there you go. That was actually really easy to put together. Um, honestly, if I wasn't recording the video, I probably could have had this together in maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes or something like that. It went that easy. And I also want to add, since my posts aren't perfect or anything like that, you know, you do have a little bit of a wiggle room, you know, so you can make things fairly straight. So that is kind of nice. And I got to say, it's pretty darn solid, to be honest. I mean, there's a little bit of movement, but not much. And there's no, like... I don't know if you would call it rotation or anything like that. So it's it's pretty darn solid. And you know what else is since my posts, they aren't perfectly plumb or straight or anything like that. You have a little bit of adjustment or wiggle room, you know, in all these clamps right here. So it actually turned out really, really good. I'm actually kind of glad I went with these posts and not concrete. All right, so there you go. I'm actually really impressed and really excited to get some panels on here which we could technically do right now, but I'm not gonna do that because I'll show you here in just a second with the panels that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using those Sanyo panels that were back here. Those are 205 watts each. Uh, with the odd shape of those, I can actually fit five on here. If you're using the regular size panels, obviously you'll put four on here. The regular panels are real easy to put on. Obviously I can show you with these clamps right here. All right, so this is just an example for a regular size panel. Obviously you would set your clamp on there for the end and just tighten your bolt down. You wanna make sure that this length right here is pretty close to the same size as your panel. And the same goes for the mid clamp right here. Obviously, you know, this is gonna clamp down two different panels at the same time, all right? Pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. And for the panels that I am gonna be using, which is why I'm not putting panels on at the moment, is the side of these panels are so thick. It's like 70, I don't know, 70 millimeters, and I need to get some longer bolts. And I'm probably gonna to have to find some different end clamps because these are just such an odd size panel. And I even tried adding just a longer bolt from one of the mid clamps just to see if I could get it. I could probably get it, but it's not gonna be a correct installation because whenever you tighten it down, you want this edge of the Z bracket right here to be touching your rail. So that way when it clamps down, it's kind of at an angle, if that makes sense. 
And these are, you know, these are just a little odd. So I'm gonna have to find some different end clamps for these specific panels. All right, so there you go. I'm getting pretty excited to throw some panels on here. It looks like I just have to wait a little bit longer. All right, so that's pretty much gonna be the end of this video. I guess if anybody's interested in a four panel, really solid rack that you could put on concrete or pillars like I did, you can get it from Signature Solar. Uh, it'd be cool if I had a discount code, but I don't. And I guess since I can't technically put on the solar panels quite yet, because I'm still waiting on some hardware, we'll probably do maybe a video two for the five panel install. However, since it's my channel and we don't always follow the rules, this being a four panel rack, obviously I'm gonna overload it with an extra panel, but they're odd shaped panels, they're small. Uh, it should be just fine. The however portion is, I got an idea. <laughs> God, it sounds like somebody's dying. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna attempt to basically overload the crap out of this. And I'm gonna see if I can install 10 of those Sanyo 205 watt panels on this rack. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, those are squirrels in the tree. Sounded bigger than that. And I just dropped a washer down inside. <laughs> Bring out all the cars, planes, helicopters, trash trucks, FedEx trucks, chainsaws, lawnmowers, weed eaters. All right.